Mute my. Oh, it's a little bouncy, guys. There we go. Practically mowing over my other window. Uh, just gonna shoot a little video real quick on this wheat. We're we're swathing it for we're hoping to get enough on the ground to bale it. Uh, I wanted to kind of show how my my header was sitting over. Uh, I got to update my uh, the globe up here on my deal. That's a that's a light. But the globe I gotta get it, the software updated on it because it's it's a little screwy. Uh, that, that's the one thing about these machines, man. You gotta you gotta keep on track with them because a couple years go by and you're a you're a dinosaur. But uh, it's uh, it's where where I currently am. I'm in the actually the very top corner of Texas, the very very northwest corner of Texas. I that that house right over there, those trees is the exact corner, northwest corner of Texas. That's where I currently am, uh, up in the panhandle. So I'm cutting some cutting some wheat here today. You know, that fence, right across the fence right here is New Mexico. Uh, right up on the hill is Oklahoma. So, kind of give you guys an idea where I am today. And I'm cutting some really, really thin wheat. We're dry. Dry, dry, dry. Man, we we have had an inch and a quarter of moisture since September. And three quarters of that was snow. And, you know, it was really wet snow, a little bit of rain in it. And then we've had about an inch of rain. Not everybody got an inch of rain, some people. So, you know, we've had anywhere from an inch to inch and three quarters of moisture. Uh, up here in our part of the world and it is hot and dry and windy uh, my own my own wheat is uh, where, I, where I was grazing out I just haven't I'm not even watering it anymore I've just abandoned it there's you can't pump enough water uh, and like I talked in a I've got about four videos on my phone I, I got a new phone and I only have one one uh, cord, so I can't get any of them onto my computer. I keep forgetting it. Uh, but in another video, I mentioned that uh, we went from really cold temperature to hot. Like we went from early spring to middle of the summer temperatures, and all this wheat just decided it had to reproduce, and so it's all headed out. And now we're now we're playing catch up. So. I'm here cutting this one. I, I cut that circle yesterday. I started on this one. I got the inside part of it cut. Uh, I'm finishing this one up. I got a circle there I'm gonna cut. Then I've got one more back to the west of here that is a little bit further behind. Probably had more water than these ones. And I'll cut it. I'm gonna bale them. And then Probably in the next week we'll start on silage. So yeah, I'm I'm just kind of getting all this laid out. This is how thin this stuff is. I'm merging it. Normally I wouldn't do this because it never dry down. Uh, but this this stuff is so thin. You know that's 32 feet, and you, you can see space in between it. I mean there's just nothing there. So it's it's not good, but. You know, I'm getting paid good money to cut it, and I, I really, well, we're not going to get as much silage this year as we normally did do, and I, yeah, that's how I make my payments, and so I was, I'm extremely happy to get, get these jobs here because this will help me get closer to making the payment on my machine, and that's because I, I don't have enough ground to pay for this machine. My, you know, myself, and so that's uh, that's how I pay for it. It's custom work. I don't have any other way to pay for this machine other than that. So I was pretty concerned. Uh, I've made enough payments on the machine that I, you know, if it come down to it, I could have sold it. But come to find out, uh, Adco will uh, 
help you refinance your equipment. You know, I don't know the exact terms. I haven't ever talked to him about it, but I was I was kind of asking some questions just in case we didn't get that much work this year. And so I could have I could have refinanced this machine, but it, it looks like I'll be I'll be okay and I'll be able to I'll be able to make my payments. So you got to cut quite a bit of quite a bit of ground to make a twenty five thousand dollar payment. This this swather here I have to cut thirty thousand dollars worth of feed to make my payments because my payment's twenty five and I got fuel and repairs and that's that's not paying myself. I don't get paid. Uh, my payment to myself is just being able to use the machine on my own ground. And that that's a pretty good payment. I I promise you that. So, you know, this this machine has to go over $30,000 minimum. And then I've got, you know, my my uh, 7810 tractor that I use for baling. I've got payments on it and my new round baler. So, it's I was a little concerned there, but looks like we should be able to, you know, we I think we'll actually make enough to cover everything. This, how thin this feed is, is kind of concerning me. But, you know, if if we just break even, that's a, and we can go on to the next year, that's a pretty good deal. So, yeah, it's, it's terrible. You can see all the dirt on the back of my machine. That's nothing compared to yesterday. It's, we're, it's literally like cutting a sandbox. I mean, it's, it's, if I was out here with a disc, I would be making just as much dust with a disc. It's really, it's bad dry, really bad dry. But, got a couple little skippers there. Uh, that's, that's due to GPS issues. Um, it's throwing my circle into an oval and it's really, really annoying when it, when it does that. But as you can see, this this feed's only probably it really looks thin like this in the camera. It's only about a foot tall. It's but we all we all need hay for cows, and it hasn't rained yet, so it'll be it'll be definitely be worth something. This will all go to a feed yard and and for a uh, guy you know a guy's own feed yard and his cows. So it's pretty, pretty good deal. We can't, we can't complain. We can't complain when people want to pay us money. But that's how I pay for my equipment. I don't. It's, it's not easy. I promise you that. It's, it's not easy at all. You just gotta cover the acres, and you know, really, it takes away from a lot of time of stuff that I need to be doing myself. Like I can't be buying calves right now. Uh, I have to, I have to have uh, somebody checking my cows for me, and right now that's my dad. Uh, my wife says she's, she doesn't really have much going on at work, so she can kind of leave early. She's checking all the kids for me, and damn, field's rough. Uh, my door latch popped, but and doctoring kids for me because I, I just got to sit here and and this this will take this will take about two and a half weeks of my time just solid cutting uh, there will be some days in between that I'm not cutting and then I'll have since it's so dry we won't have we don't ever have humidity during the day anyway but we'll have even less and so this day will just shatter I'll have to uh I won't. Eat, I doubt I'll even be able to bale this hay during the day. I'll probably have to bale it at night just to get any humidity at all. And so then I'm going to be working days and nights together. But that's just what it what it takes. Um, if this hay was a lot thicker, you know, a lot heavier, then we could bale it during the day with a net wrap baler. 
but since it is as thin as it is, uh, we just, there's no way it'll just be, it's like baling straw. It's real, it's real short and it's just a real pain and we want to put up a good product for them. But, you know, that's, that's pitiful. It, it truly is just pitiful what that hay is. But, hey, that's just the carts we're dealt this year. Uh, that's just kind of how things are going. It's our, it, there's nothing we can do about it. We just got to keep going. Uh, the ag sector right now here is not even just the ag sector. It's just everyone's hurting. It's nobody, there's no work. Nobody's paying their bills. It's, it's getting pretty rough in this part of the world. And cattle, I've noticed uh, cattle have gone down. Uh, oh, five to six dollars in the past two days. I actually hedged much of the cattle I have, so I'm kind of maybe protecting them somewhat. You know, it, fuel's going up, we're getting dry. It's just, you better, better sense up your pants because it's going to get rough. That's, that's just kind of the way it seems. Now, if we start getting some rain, life will be a lot better. But if we don't, it's gonna be a it's gonna be a wreck. I mean, it will be a flat out wreck if we don't get some rain here really quickly. Uh, hay will go through the roof. You won't be able to you won't be able to buy a bale to feed a cow. And even if you could find the hay, you couldn't afford it. It just wouldn't work out, especially with meat prices. So. I bought, I bought a pile of silage. It's two circles worth. It's 3,500 tons of silage. Uh, so I'm, I'm fine. But uh, you know, I've got the equipment to handle it. Hell, it's all borrowed money anyway. So if it doesn't rain, I'd have to buy the hay. I might as well buy the silage because it's a hell of a lot cheaper, and I got the equipment to handle it. But uh, yeah, it. Really, it's just kind of a, just a shitty situation no matter what, but that's life. Uh, it just, we go from, I go from a doctor, and I doctored cattle from the 1st of August till I actually doctored the calf yesterday, but uh, we've kind of slowed down a lot on doctoring calves, so we kind of got that, but that's, that took a huge toll on me, uh, just mentally and financially was we it was the hardest winter we've ever had i mean that's i've never doctored that many cattle and i've never hauled that many cattle off before it, it truly was a nightmare and i mean it's it's a bad nightmare uh bad you know and it, bad enough that you wake up you don't want to go outside because you know you got to doctor cattle and you know you're going to find dead cattle and and then you, when you go to sleep at night, all you do is doctor cattle and find dead cattle, and so you don't get any sleep at all. I haven't slept in months, and so that's kind of slowed down. That that's a very good thing. Um, but the calves I have right now for grass, they, hell, they're break even so high, it take a miracle to to make money on them, let alone not lose any money. But we're just gonna keep going from there. That's all we can do. Uh, we're gonna go until they say we can't go anymore. That's kind of like uh, you know this whole this whole deal here. Just we're gonna keep on keep on going. But it's it's good. It it is really good to have because this was worrying me a lot about not having enough work. But it's good to have the work. I don't have time for the work, but. You know, I, I put my name on that piece of paper saying I was going to make those payments. And and that has relieved actually quite a bit of stress on me. So that's really, really nice to have the work. But that fucking does. Um, it's really, it's just, it's really nice to have the work. I don't like not being able to make payments. So... 
that's relieved a lot of stress actually being able to get this work now we just gotta sort out everything else and then kind of go from there if it's not one thing it's something else but at least this part of this part of my worrying is it's subsided a little bit <coughs> but uh the amount the money you have to pay for this equipment is it is just a drop in the, the financial roller coaster that I'm on. So if I had to sell my equipment, woo, really, really kind of what to do on that one. But uh, it, at least this equipment, I I have traded enough old equipment and bought enough new equipment and made enough payments on my equipment that. I, I would actually be able to leave with some money in my pocket if I didn't have to sell it. So that's a really, really nice thought. And, you know, it, it, I also was looking at it like, you know, if I got to sell this machine, uh, I could probably sell it and walk away with enough cash on it to uh, just buy a, a new pull behind or a, a used self-propelled and not have to go and work two two weeks a year just cutting paint just to make my payments. And two weeks a year is a big thing for me, so. But I I like the machine, and I'm gonna keep running it as long as I have. Because where I'm going, I've I've got to have a good reliable machine. I I can't I just can't not have a reliable machine with it. Where I'm going and the amount of acres that I'm gonna deal with. So, it's better just to suck it up and deal with it. But anyways, so I know this is dragged on for a long time, but uh, just kind of, I'll get this uploaded along with like the five other videos that I still have in my phone and, and life will be good. So thanks for watching. Keep tuning in and keep liking it or disliking it, whatever the hell you want to do.